Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, genuine is always better than fake, but is fake better than nothing at all? A topic discussed in many different areas of life and now a live issue in archaeology. Have a look at this. The technology of 3D printing drawn from multiple photographs of an item. This, in fact, is a replica in the making, a scale reconstruction of the triumphal arch from Palmyra. The real arch was destroyed by ISIS. This one, built in blocks, will in fact be installed in Trafalgar Square next month. Then it goes to New York and then to uh, Palmyra itself. So how far can a, a replica substitute for a destroyed past? Should you even contemplate putting replicas on the sites of the originals? Join me now in the studio, Dr. Alexei Karanovska, involved in the uh, ARCH project there. And from Edinburgh is author James Crawford. Evening to you both. Um, Alexei, tell us a little about the Institute for, Data for Digital Archaeology, your group. How well can you make a replica? How, how realistic is it? Very realistic indeed. So our processes, which are a combination of architectural 3D printing and 3D machining, as you saw in the clip there, can really reproduce objects to the level to sub-millimetre precision. Sub-millimetre? And there are then a series of surface uh, techniques that we can use to reproduce the effects of weathering, of ageing and the general appearance right. of the stone. Right. And, and, and the material, we should say, you're not putting this in, you're not making it out of plastic. What, what, what would you make yeah, the arch out of? Absolutely stuff? right. So that's right. We're working, and we're working on technologies which combine real stone. So the arch in Trafalgar Square will actually be marble um, and also geocomposite materials. So these are artificial stones that are produced by very large scale 3D mm. printers. And, and what is the point? out of interest. What do you see as the purpose of what you're doing? So there are many points. Um, in the context of large-scale reconstruction, what we're doing is exploring technologies which we believe can make a real difference in reconstructing regions like Syria which have been badly damaged. And these technologies really open the door for producing a way of preserving the, the cultural heritage, um, both the tangible and the intangible aspects of that, okay. um, and of really keeping the living history of these sites alive. All right. James, does it excite you? Yeah, I mean, it does excite me. I think the, the technology is, uh, is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's awe-inspiring in the, in the true sense of the, of the phrase. Um, I think my concern is, is not so much about what is going to be happening in Trafalgar Square and Times Square, which, which uh, is incredible and I will be visiting. It's more the idea of reconstructing on the actual site of Palmyra itself. Right, and, and, and just tell me why you wouldn't want this arch to go back to where it was before ISIS destroyed it, or a replica to go back. Well, I mean, one of the things that, that uh, it brings to mind to me is a, a theory um, that comes from robotics, actually, from the 1970s. And it's something called the uncanny valley. And it's this idea that machines are going to get to a point where they're so close to, to humans that, um, that instead of us empathising with them, actually respond to them with revulsion. And I think there's a real danger with this kind of reconstruction of archaeology that, that we may respond to, to, to Palmyra in the same way, that it becomes, uh, if you like, an uncanny city and that what a tragic end for, for this city if actually it's somewhere that when we visit it we, we feel a sense of unease. Why, why would we feel a sense of unease? You're going to go to Palmyra, you're going to see the arch there, you're barely even going to be able to tell that it isn't the arch that was there two years ago and you're saying that had some subtle effect on us. I think that's right, yes. Yeah, it's that very much the idea of you're barely going to be able to tell and you may not realise it, but as, as time goes by, that, that response, as I say, is, is this kind of concept of revulsion. And it's happened before. I mean, most famously in uh, 1900, uh, the English antiquarian bought up the, the site of Knossos on Crete and, and he reconstructed it using a new technology, reinforced concrete. And, and some people were inspired by it and thought it was fantastic. Others, actually, uh, Evelyn Waugh, for example, when he went on a, on a Mediterranean cruise, uh, when he visited the site, his, his opinion was that it was a, a place of oppressive wickedness. Um, so there is a danger when you engage in this process of reconstruction that it can have a negative impact, Got it. and that's what would concern me. Yeah. Alexei, is, is the plan to put the reconstructed arch back where the original was, or to put it in a kind of a museum 
500 metres well, away. Well, I think several things are important here. So firstly, the, the overall aim of this project is to move towards actually on-site reconstruction. So really? the installation in Trafalgar Square um, and in New York are a demonstration of this technology. Now, in response to the points that have been made, I think, first of all, I would agree that it is extremely important that we understand that the reconstruction is not the original. And it would be wrong to put objects on a site and somehow claim that they're something that they're not. But I think it's very important also to realise that there is a huge tragedy in the complete loss of these physical objects. And yet the physical objects themselves are not the only elements of the cultural heritage that they represent. So I think that there is, we have to balance here um, the a respect for the site, but also making sure that we don't get uh, too caught up perhaps in what one might describe as the romance of the ruin. You know, it's very important that we don't, uh, that we don't, we're not too attached to these physical, the physical we objects. Could, we could talk about this a great deal longer, but I'm afraid we don't have a great deal longer. Thank you both very much indeed.